the final year where we have a chance. So for today's presentation outline, I'm going to be talking about why this is the last year we have a chance. Uh, I'm also going to be talking about why John Lynch sucks. And then we're going to conduct a SWOT analysis of the 49ers. We're going to take a look at possible solutions at the end. And then finally, we'll open up the floor for a Q&A. So why is this the last year we have a chance at winning the Super Bowl? Well, for me to provide this answer to you, we need to take a look at the historical context of the team, and we also need to take a look at the contract situation, the salary cap restrictions that this team has. Let me take you guys back to 2012. This was the first year I became a 49ers fan. I was a very happy kid, had a great childhood, great time watching sports, and then I met the 49ers. My first year watching, we made it all the way to the NFC Championship game. I was very happy, very excited. And then Kyle Williams fumbled in late moments, and we lost to the Giants. He fumbled a punt. Third time in the game, he fumbled. This was the NFC Championship game. We lost. The next year, we make it to the Super Bowl. Very happy. We get down to the red zone. Jim Harbaugh doesn't run the ball. Overthrow to Crabtree. We lose the Super Bowl. The following year, we make it back to the NFC Championship game. Richard Sherman tip. We lose. That starts a six-year period where we don't make it back to any sort of competition. But we make it back to the Super Bowl in 2020. Jimmy Garoppolo is my quarterback. And he overthrows Emmanuel Sanders on a potential game-winning touchdown. Two years later, I personally fly down to Los Angeles. We make it back to the NFC Championship game, and I really felt this was the year. I had a feeling. Which is why I spent $3,000 on these last-minute tickets to go to SoFi Stadium to watch this game in person. And we lose to the Rams in the NFC Championship game. We blow a 10-point lead in the fourth. And the Rams end up winning the Super Bowl. The next year we make it back to the NFC Championship game. 2023. Brock Purdy blows out his elbow. And we lose. To the Super Bowl champions. Last year. I was in China. I could have been doing anything. Could have been traveling. Could have been just minding my own business. But I had to check in. And we lose the Super Bowl to the Kansas City Chiefs. I had champagne ready. I had a Spotify playlist with songs like We Are the Champions. Championships by Meek Mill. I had a playlist ready for when we won. And we lost in overtime. So the fans will lose our minds if we don't win it this year. The amount of emotional and physical, mental trauma that has been inflicted by the 49ers, um, I don't think any other fan base has been through that. You could argue that some fan bases don't even get a chance to make the playoffs, or some fan bases don't even get a chance to hit the Super Bowl. At least you already know that you're hopeless. We are filled with hope. We are put, they have put the candy right in front of our eyes. Six times to be exact. Seven times to be exact. In the last 15 years. If we don't win it this year, I truly believe that the mental asylum list in the Bay Area will triple. I believe crime rate will quadruple. I think that a lot of fans will have experience similar 
effects that I have, long-lasting effects that I didn't know would affect me until later on in life, such as, you know, difficulty socializing, difficulty eating, um, losing interest in daily activities, fatigue, feeling hopeless, headaches, stomach pains, that sort of stuff. Next, we'll take a look at the contractual situation on the 49ers. So as you all may know, Brandon Ayuk has just signed a four-year, $120 million extension, $76 million guaranteed, which makes him a top eight receiver paid in the NFL. Very good. Love Brandon Ayuk. Even have him on jersey. Didn't want to make a video on him. I just didn't want to talk about it. Didn't want to care about it. Wanted to live my life stress-free. Now I'm talking about it. Trent Williams, no guaranteed money left on his... Oh, wait. We just signed today. Let me change that. Whoops. Trent Williams extended today. Very, very happy. They restructured his deal. They gave him more money. He's back. But there's also negative effects of that. Brock Purdy. This is his last year making $790,000. His market value is at around $52 million a year. And he will get his extension next offseason. We currently have eight players on our team making more than $15 million. Brock Purdy will make more than all of them almost double the money that all of them are making. Uh, which probably means that two out of these eight are probably going to leave, maybe three. Uh, my suspect, my guess is that Debo leaves. I think Hargrave leaves. And I think you could either see Trent or Kittle leave as well, or maybe even both. Because that is the effect of having a quarterback on a rookie deal, especially a seventh round quarterback. You get to pay him $700,000 a year. And you get to spread your money around. But that luxury will not be in place after this year. Which, means, which is further why this is the last chance we have at winning a Super Bowl before it all collapses. And I mean, and in collapsing, I mean like this. Okay? Because I remember this day. I remember this offseason very well. Matter of fact, this is probably the most memorable offseason I've had in my life. I don't think this will ever escape me. This is generational trauma. I'm going to tell my kids about this one. Because at the end of the 2014 season, we lost our entire team. When Jim Harbaugh left, I have a fear that I would just never see a good football team ever again. Those next six years where I was waiting for this team to be good felt like 40. And I have a fear that this will repeat itself. This will happen again. And like I said earlier, this has had long-lasting effects on my mental and emotional well-being. I can repeat the symptoms. Difficulty eating. Difficulty sleeping. Uh, losing interest in daily activities. Uh, losing contact with family and friends. Headaches. Stomach pains. Fevers, soreness, um, feeling hopeless, fatigue. These are all effects of this traumatic experience. And I'm really scared that when we extend Brock Purdy, something like this will happen again. Now we'll dive into the second part of the presentation. Why John Lynch sucks. Who is John Lynch? John Lynch is a former NFL safety for the Buccaneers who is currently the general manager of the 49ers. Now, because he was a former NFL safety NFL player, a very good one, a Hall of Fame player, are there possible ramifications of playing football that affects his decision making as a general manager? Let's take a look. CTE. What is CTE? CTE is chronic traumatic encephalopathy. 
It's a progressive degenerative disease affecting people who have suffered repeated concussions and traumatic brain injuries. Could Mr. Lynch be a possible suspect of having CTE? My co-writer of this paper, Antonio Brown of CTE ESPN, uh, have conducted extensive research on why John Lynch could possibly have CTE. So we're going to take a look at examples of CTE-based decision-making. First is trading three first-round picks for Trey Lance. Those three first-round picks ended up being Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill, Bradley Chubb, and Tyndall. Next is drafting Solomon Thomas third overall in the same draft that Patrick Mahomes was available when our quarterback at the time was C.J. Beathard. Next we have sticking with Jimmy Garoppolo when Tom Brady was made available by the Patriots. Drafting Mike McGlinchney, ninth overall. Trading DeForest Buckner to the Colts in exchange for Javon Kinlaw when we could have took Judy, Terrell, or Lamb. And then we gave the same contract we should have gave the Buckner to Hargrave. But we couldn't do it because we offered $85.5 million to D. Ford, who barely played. And is not in the league anymore. Drafting Cameron Law to third round last year. He is no longer on the team. Starting Colton McKivitz at right tackle. Jake Moody. I believe these are all examples of CTE-based decision-making. However, he still has his job. Mainly because he's been getting lucky with his late-round picks. For example, picking Bach Purdy at the last pick of the draft. If you thought he was that good, he wouldn't have been the last pick. George Kittle, 5th round. Jawan Jennings, 7th round. Greenlaw, 5th round. Hufanga, 5th round. Lucky. So now we'll conduct a SWOT analysis on the 49ers. Let's take a look at their strengths of their team. First of all, the wide receiver room. Beautiful. B.A., Debo, Jawan. That's the best wide receiver trio in the league. We also have a rookie, Jacob Cowing, who showed signs, showed flashes in preseason. I'm excited to see him play. Running back room. We have the best running back in the NFL, Christian McCaffrey. Nice little handcuff with J.P. Mason. I'm very confident in our running back room. Quarterback room is solid. I like the addition of Josh Dobbs and obviously Brock Purdy. He's our franchise guy. And first, for the first time in... A lot of years, I am actually really excited to see our cornerback room. I feel safe about our cornerback room this year. Charverius Ward, Demo Lenoir, who I should see a huge jump from this year. I think he'll be the best corner on the team this year. We drafted a third-round rookie, Renardo Green at nickelback. And Isaac Yadam, who has experience playing nickel as well, is his backup. Now we'll take a look at the weaknesses on the team. Right tackle, Colton McKivitz. Ass. Right guard, Spencer Burford or John Feliciano. Ass. Center, Jake Brendel. Ass. Ass. O-line is ass. Another weakness is Kyle Shanahan's play calling in the fourth quarter of a big game. Can you please call a run play? Please. Please. Another weakness is Jake Moody's kicking. When Jake Moody kicks the ball, I suggest everyone at home, please take cover. 
have some sort of protection over your head. I don't want you ending up like John Lynch with CTE. We'll take a look at the opportunities on how we can win the Super Bowl this year. We need God. We need to increase our prayer amount by 15% because we need good injury luck throughout the year. I have personally already implemented this in my life. I've prayed more for myself, but also I've prayed more for the team. And I think everybody at home can do that too. Just say one prayer extra a day. Just one more than you usually would. And please include the 49ers in that prayer because we need it. Lastly, of the SWOT analysis, we'll take a look at the threats to mental and emotional well-being. I touched on this a little bit earlier in the presentation, but as we can see, the last three years have been a very traumatic three years watching football. It has made me reconsider whether or not I actually love the sport and whether or not I will continue watching. I cannot believe I'm doing this to myself, but I am watching this year because this is our final chance. In 2021, we suffered an NFC Championship loss. I was in person. In 2022, we suffered another NFC Championship loss. I had to watch Josh Johnson come in and play because Brock Purdy couldn't get protected because he was getting blocked by a third string tight end on Hassan Reddick. Matter of fact, if we go earlier in the presentation, we can see that Josh Johnson is also on the screen in this slide. And this was the 2014 season. This guy was playing in an NFC Championship game in 2023. And I had to watch three quarters of it. And he ended up getting hurt too. So we had Christian McCaffrey at quarterback at one point. And then obviously last year we had the Super Bowl loss. Solutions. How will we finally end the misery? How will we win the Super Bowl this year? These are the three keys. We need to stay injury free. Which is not happening. Okay. Our first round pick, Ricky Pearsall, just got shot in the chest before the year even started. Leonard Floyd, knee sprain. Drake Jackson, out for the year. Eli Mitchell just got released because he's out for the year. We got to somehow stay injury free. I don't know how. We have the worst injury luck in the league. Drake Greenlaw last year tore his Achilles by just running onto the field in the Super Bowl. He literally just ran off the sideline to get on the field to start playing defense and tore his Achilles from doing that. Next, we need to extend... Next, we need to protect Brock Purdy. And I don't think we will be able to. Because like I said earlier, the right side of our O-line is like toilet paper. It's like Charmin. It's like if you put two sticks from the center to the right tackle and you attach a piece of toilet paper across. That's what the right side of our O-line is like. Which is why I believe Brock Purdy will get injured early in the year and we need to sign Tom Brady. I think... We need to let go of our egos, John and Kyle. We need to let go of our egos. We just need to release, let it go, let go of our pride. Just, just let it, let it fly. Sign Tom Brady. Give him all the money he wants. One year deal. And win the chip. I will now open up the floor for questions and answers. Or Q&A. Why did I say questions and answers? Let me know what you guys think in the comments.